Yo, what is up, guys, and welcome to the first Nerdum Beyond podcast, because, you know, we're changing the name, we're getting a new brand, we're doing, we're doing shit out here. And we have a massive discussion about a few things. It's just me and the boy, Ren, the two pretty much who own the goddamn channel. Ren, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Ren, I am the founder of the channel, and yeah, I designed all the cool stuff, banners, profile pictures, and the band I'm here does the videos. I make voices. Yeah, just like voices in her head. Yeah. <laughs> and we got a whole lot of news, so you can take it away from here right, now. So, uh, where to begin? Two days ago. Let's, two days ago, don't. I'll tell how it happened. Two days ago, I woke up oh. to a. I was up taking a nap. And I woke up to a text message from a fellow YouTuber, comic book nerd wanted me to create a thumbnail for a rant that they're going to work on. So, my first reaction was, I screamed no the same way I reacted to Ben Affleck. Even though I got over that, you know, right away. Um, this one, I couldn't believe it because he's been rumored about three times since the shortlist came out a couple months ago. And so, I went on Twitter heavily research and then I call Phantom here yep I remember to war to ward him and he didn't believe me so he let me see why <laughs> let me tell you why it's just that they've been you know hyping that up and putting it bigger I'm like yeah that probably never happened but these are some good fan edits and it's like a year after I saw the first thing of them warning Robert Pattinson if you call me and I'm just standing there like, well, maybe this isn't a family emergency or something. You know, he only calls when there's something super important. Otherwise, he'd tell me on PlayStation. He tells me it happened, and I'm like, what the fuck? You're lying. <laughs> so, to tell you the story. And so, we talked about it. <laughs> we decided to do a podcast. I asked him to do, a, like, a news report of it. But um, this is what happened. I told him to wait because there was a, an article came up that he was a short runner with Nicholas Holt. Mm -hmm. The internet couldn't decide if this was true or not. And Warner, Brother, Warner Brothers denied it. And then finally, last night, I called the Kings. I can't pronounce it right. It's, I don't know what it is, like a film award or film festival yeah, or something. Write down a name. Write down a name in the. Um in the discord chat and I'll try to tell you what it is but keep going and so yes the canes you were right this was this is a bad this is a, a casting to where fans became toxic all over again it's like Ben Affleck when he got casted yep and within like not even 24 hours they had a petition for him to, to get rid of him pretty much and it's ridiculous yeah it's it is. It's like, why? I mean, you can't repeat the same mistake that we've been making since Michael Keegan was casted. Yeah. You know, we had we had a few good members. Like, oh, Kimber was okay. Uh, George Clooney was just George Clooney in the costume. Um, Christian Bale was all right until Dark Knight Rises. But um, I love Ben Affleck as Batman. But here's the thing, man. It's, this is all your fault. Exactly. We got this actor. I'm not saying he's bad because every actor redeems himself. He did. He had um, a few movies. I'll list them down. 2012, he had Cosmo Fallis, which he was pretty much Bruce Wayne in that, but without, uh, you know, My Parents Are Dead shit and uh, Batman suit. He was just a spoiled rotten kid. Rich kid. Okay. He did a movie called The Rover. He got The Rover, which got good reviews. The Lost City, he got good reviews. Good time. Highlight. He just made a movie with Dave the Foe called The Lighthouse, which I heard is really good. Good acting from both of them. Yeah. But um, here's the thing. Alright. If he's such a bad actor and is known for Twilight, why is one of the most interesting, most great directors, Christopher Nolan, want him in the movie? Exactly. You know, it's like, it's like when people say, oh, Andrew Garfield's a bad actor. Well, look what movie he was in that like kind of redeemed himself from Spider-Man because 
about Sony screwing him over. He wasn't the best Spider-Man. No, he wasn't, but, you know. Now, that movie's really big. Like, I've been keeping tabs since Matt Reeves was on. Yeah. Now, the whole concept of this Batman movie is pretty much a noir-driven, emotional development into Batman. They've been looking for a, a young actor between the mid-20s and early 30s. Robert he, is 32 years old. He could do nine nine appearances. three Six Batman movies if they wanted to. And three appearances in other movies in the DC Universe. Like um, another New Justice League, um, Superman, Superman movie, The Flash, Green Lantern movie. He could appear in anything. Just to be on there. I mean, how he could be in the Batgirl movie. Exactly. And um, involving this... That Matt Reeves kind of teased us a few months ago for the villains. Yeah. And it's shined up again. The Penguin and Catwoman, which are. And the I wouldn't say they aren't interesting choices, but they're like really well done choices, in my opinion. Despite yeah. me. We haven't like, seen. Have you ever seen a good Catwoman? I love Hannah Hathaway. She was Catwoman. And, yeah. you know, I don't care what people say about her, but she was Catwoman. She had. Beauty, the uh, manipulation, the sass, and she was a thief, like in the comics. Now, don't get me wrong, Michelle Pfeiffer was a good cat, but she wasn't comic accurate, realistic cat. She was she a cat super, woman. She was cat a supernatural woman. cat. In the movie, doesn't exist. Yeah. They don't snap that out of existence, yeah. and we're proud of it. No. Now, here's the thing. Um, I was looking up some clips of that one movie I was talking about earlier, Cosmopolis, yeah. and it was a scene with Paul Giamatti, and they were talking kind of about both societies and stuff, and Robert has his American accent, how he acts it up, he sounds yeah. like Michael Keaton, but I think it's Batman, though, but yeah. soft, kind of raspy voice. Wait. Even when I saw the scene, I was like, "Yeah, this is him. This yeah. is Bruce." Plus, if you see the if people see the movie, suits. It's all he wears suits. I was like, "Okay, you know who wears suits? Batman wears suits. You don't ever see him wearing like casual wear in the comics. You know, he you can't know, afford you know, it. You don't see him, you know, rocking a Hawaiian shirt <laughs> and short and, and swim trunks. <laughs> I just can't see it. <laughs> all we see him is suits and a turtleneck." And possibly a speedo if he's swimming. Exactly, like, come on. Come on, every Batman had a turtleneck since Keaton. That was a beautiful ass turtleneck, but we ain't gonna disgrace that turtleneck. Now, um, there is a big rumor is coming back again. Even yeah. though the actor is not, like, denying it, he's, like, spreading, like, like yeah, I'm gonna be this character. I wouldn't mind it. I could take on Robert Pattinson's Batman. Josh Gad. The voice of Olaf, who also starred in the live version of Beauty and the Beast as Gaston's best friend. I keep forgetting his name because I never paid attention. I don't remember movies. those movies. He I don't could, know. He is rumored to be the Penguin, which you know what? That's a good casting. I mean, he's perfect. He has, casting. He has the build of the Penguin. He's like he's not fat, but he's not exactly like he's. He's ch- he's chubby. You know, we need that. Yeah. And um, for Catwoman, I don't like how fans think Warner Brothers can listen to them to do a the They want Kristen Stewart, and I jumped in and said, no, she's better. I don't know. She's better off being a reporter. Things never work well. She's better off being a reporter in the movie or a second tier or something. But I'm running your cut now. Yeah, you better know. Alright. Um, so that's his ex wife. You know, that's even worse. Yeah. But uh, who I want for Catwoman is, uh, her name is Morena Karen from um, Deadpool and Gotham. Who is she playing Deadpool? She was Vanessa. Oh, I can see that. And you know how I think she would be the rugged she has. I can see that. She has that a is a perfect casting. Yeah. Cat, you see the first technically one. Technically, Catwoman, Selena is older than um, Bruce. Yeah. It's perfect. 
but, since. Um, and I don't know if the woman is older. She's not, but she looks just a bit older. It'd be perfect. I mean, she has, has the, that. She had the charm. She's fucking hot. And she has, she has the thought, physique. She has the physique. Yeah. And she looks good with short hair. But now, like, everything's changing, though, with, it, with DCU. You, I mean, I watched a lot of Popcorn Man a couple of weeks ago for the first time. And I'm like, all right, I'll watch it. I feel like that started the recon process of the DCEU. And Shazam kind of is continuing it as someone who's... I saw it twice, so the first time, then I saw it recently today. Bootleg copy, but it was still pretty good. Even re-looking at it, I'm like, yeah, I can see. Because they're trying... What they did is they turned the recent superheroes, like let's say Superman, because he was in it. And then we see a kid play, playing with a Superman and Batman figure, so these things... They exist, but and I guess they're trying to wipe away just like ever happened. Yeah, like the soft reboot. That's why, like the Suicide Squad two, people think oh, it's over, but like no, because the original actors are coming back. Pretty much like what happened to uh, the Incredible Hulk. That was a soft sequel reboot to the first Hulk movie. I mean, we don't talk about the first Hulk movie. Yeah, I know that was terrible. Um, I kind of like this direction they're doing. Like they're, they're fixing their mistakes. They should have started with the solo films, then the team up film. Not let's have uh, one movie of Superman that we know about. Let's introduce Batman, already like 20 years experience, but we only get like Easter eggs in the first one. Superman movie because Man of Steel is off the universe. Then we get a movie about villains that you know we know who they are, but they're not developed. Cause I'm like, I feel like they rushed the whole situation with their thing, but that's where the Batman can come and actually fix a lot of issues. Yeah. Now, I am hoping that Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is his Joker. Yeah. It's the right I want age. That. It's the right age because um, Joker was always older than Batman. Older yeah. Than, since, since you know he first came out, but. 80s, they kind of like rebooted him and gave him an origin kind of with no name, and then turns out he's younger than Batman Bruce Wayne or something. It's like, okay, yeah, that, that's okay. Like, that's dude, it's like <laughs> it works, but it's like, yeah, it will work, but it might be like I can always see an older Joker because it's like there's someone who two people who are beaten up by life, like. They've lost so much, but it's like yeah. the older one is the crazier one because he sees that it doesn't matter if you try your hardest to be good, you're gonna have to fuck up eventually and do a couple of things that it brings the chaotic nature. Yeah. So I feel plus, like Joaquin Phoenix can do plus it. They have no timeline setting for the Batman, like yeah. it could be the 90s because 90s are something because we see Bruce Wayne in the Joker trailer, but little Bruce Wayne meeting Phoenix, um, Arthur Fleck. Yeah. You know, he's giving him a smile on his face and all of that, because that's what he wants to do. He wants to be this guy who wants to put smiles on the ground. Even though he's mentally deranged because of the abuse of mother, it feels like. Yeah. But, um, if, if they could do that, I mean, I'm seeing they're going to do this great job because Jared Leto's like, oh, I'm coming back. I want to come back. But we see him in the behind the scenes photos of Harley getting kicked out by him from their home. Yeah. And since he's busy with Morbius and all that, and some other movies and his tour, he's getting, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing three different Jokers in different comics. I feel like they should, how they should do it, if they do introduce the Joker into this um, Robert Pattinson series, kill off one Joker. Yeah. And then, we, you know, over the year, then we see a Joker pop up, he's like, this one is a new one, I'm not used to this one. Like, make that one more deranged, more of the Jared Leto style of Joker, like, he's out here just straight up murdering people, not yeah. giving them monologues, he's laughing about it. he had the tattoo, he's you or he's like, taking, uh, this is gonna sound fucking morbid, he's tattooing people as he kills them. I mean, it could work out, yeah. I mean, if you introduce the Joker game, for like a, for a better Beyond movie, you know, like, yeah. like, if you look back at better Beyond the cartoon, you see that these Jokers were, you know, they're a gang, but they're not like the Joker, they don't kill people yeah. they just hurt them. You know, they hurt them badly. Yeah. But the Batman movie they're saying that is gonna be three villains we just mentioned. Riddler, Penguin, Catwoman. And there's a rumor going 
going on, there's going to be a thousand villains in this. So I'm guessing maybe something with the mob, because that's how Batman first yeah. started out. It was a mob thing, you know? Yeah. He wants justice for the per death of his parents. I don't mind, you know, the few villains, like, that he was asked to be appear on there, or... Yeah. Calendar Man. <sighs> but then they'd ha they wouldn't be able to do the long Halloween. Yeah, but the funny thing is, though, people think it's going to be a campy thing. I'm like, Matt Reeves? No, I did not see No, this shit three. is about to be dark yeah, as this, fuck. It's gonna be more like you're gonna feel bad for Batman in this way. Like, like if you read the comics right now, you're, we're noticing that Bruce Wayne is a really mentally unstable person. Yeah, like he's I, been. It just takes a few little things to go wrong, he snaps. Yeah, like everybody's reading right now. Bane um, broke him. Marriage didn't happen, and that's taking a whole new toll on him. Then he's gonna fight his father, Thomas Wayne, from Flashpoint Earth, in the coming yeah. issues. And it's like, all right, we're gonna see this kind of Batman, you know, completely unstable, like to the max on the big screen with detective skills. We never seen him show that in any other movie. We see in uh, the first Batman, a little bit uh, research. Batman Returns, uh, only a little bit, Batman Forever, just him solving riddles, and then yeah. Batman and Robin, we didn't, we don't see any detective work at all, and then we it's saw, Batman and Robin, yeah, and we saw brief detective skills in the Nolan trilogy, of the Dark Knight, and then Ben Affleck, not that much, it's like, what we saw of him was mainly just hoping for crossover success. Yeah, and now we now we're getting a chance to see an actual you know, I'm sure it's a well written Batman story. Yeah. With, you know, probably a good casting. Like they're gonna start filming in November or December of this year because it's gonna be set to be twenty twenty one. Yeah, because yeah, I'm like well when it comes to this movie in general what I'm hoping for is that they actually develop Batman, and I feel like with it taking the names of Batman, it's gonna have a lot of what that what the animated series did with the Batman, because that one was, it was kind of boring and kind of dark for a kid's cartoon. Yeah. So I feel like they're gonna like they're gonna like hmm, we can be as dark as we want to because the cartoon was pretty fucking dark, and the comics are dark, so we only have to focus on those two genres. Because looking back on it, and I'm someone who was actually a fan, it's like, there were moments where it was just people getting straight up murdered, and how they just explained what that person went missing, Batman would find them, he wouldn't, like, confirm deaths, but he'd be like, they're, they're going, they're dead. So I don't want them to have to, like, of course the shit ain't gonna be campy, but I want them to get to the point where he's just sitting there and he's investigating, and he's able to analyze stuff on the back computer. My one question to you is, who do you think they're casting as Alfred, or do you even think there's gonna be a mention of Alfred? I think there's gonna be an Alfred, because you can't have a Batman movie, or a cartoon, or a comic without Alfred. So who do you think, who do you want casted as Alfred? Like, and what Alfred do you want? Because there is you know what? a bunch of Alfred they can take, like the military okay. Alfred, the Alfred that just knows how to fight. Well, let's see, if they're gonna do, like, Earth-1 Batman, I want yeah. a military skill to Alfred. But shows that you know he's old; he can't do too much. Okay, I want that kind of Alfred. Now there is a couple of castings I wouldn't mind for Alfred. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Michael Caine coming back. He was a great Alfred in the um, Nolan universe. Yeah, I can see that. Um, fuck, get Gary Oldman. <laughs> Give me a movie. Alright, Gary Oldman was Commissioner Gordon in the Dark Knight Trilogy. He was also in The Fifth Element as uh, Zork. He was also yeah, he was also Dracula in the 90s. Alright, now I know who you're talking yeah. about. I can see that. I can see that. Even though he's kind of short, but you know what? He's old. <laughs> and like, the, the that's Earth all I remember about Alfred. Yeah. Batman, the uh, comic from just Jeff Johns. Um, that Alfred was pretty old and he's walking around. Now the yeah. third choice, get John Glover, who was Lionel Luther in the Smallville franchise. He also voiced the Riddler. 
I can see that. He's really he's old. He's old enough. He's tall, and I'm sure he could do a good British accent. Yeah. Plus, if you go back and look at the Lionel Luther scenes, he could sound pretty intelligent. And that's all we really need is an old person with a British accent that can sound intelligent. Plus, who's good with finding choreography? You can make it like, okay, you're old, you can barely do this, you're out of breath. Yeah. But, I don't know, like, all these fans are snappy. Like, I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos of, like, snappy. And I saw one, like, said, oh, you took a huge dump on my Batman. It's like, fucker, we don't give a shit about you. Legit. They don't cast people to make y'all niggas happy at the end of the day. And the one thing I was, um, I was saying when I said, like, okay, I'm going to bring this up in the podcast, I'm like, Fati- yeah. your petitions aren't going to do shit. Like, you don't like the casting of Batman. Oh, well, like, at the end of the day, you said this about four or five different actors for Batman. Michael Keaton got hate. Uh, Kimmer got hate. Ben Affleck got hate. The only person y'all liked was Christian Bale. And at the end of the day, he didn't. He did a great Batman, no lie. But it, it wasn't a perfect Batman. Now, am I gonna say Robert Pattinson's gonna be a perfect Batman? Bruce Wayne definitely, but Bruce Wayne, I want to see his Batman. Batman. Yeah, like okay. I read the article with Michael Keaton's like bashed horribly. <laughs> Michael Keaton was like, <sighs> he was treated bad. Yeah. They call him a calamity and casting. I mean, come on, if you had Heath Ledger who came from two horrible movies that people didn't like. Yeah. One was like, you know, like a weird ass musical called Night's Tale. Then you have, um, yeah. Brokeback Mountain that caused a lot of controversy because it was a straight out gay movie. I cannot quit you. <laughs> you have. Why uh, can I quit you, Batman? You have Paul Rudd, who's going to be a comedic actor. For those who forgot about Halloween, one of the Halloween movies, who said he was pretty serious on there. He was a psychopath. On there. He's our Ant Man. Our Diary Jr. got some bashful hate because he was Tony Stark because of his drug habit. You're cutting out again, right? Oh my God. It's- Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. We have... We'll continue your point. The point is, we can't judge someone from one movie that was from 10 years ago. My only real problem, not even my problem, it's not even a problem, it's mainly, it's the fans, because they always end up doing it. And my one problem is, you make actors not want to do the role, that's yeah. what happened with Shailene Woodley. That shit still gets me to the dick. Cause I was like, she could have been a really good Mary Jane, and she would have looked exactly like the ultimate Mary Jane. That's what that. That's what that movie needed too. To be honest, it didn't need a hot Mary Jane. And like to be the honest, comic. they don't even like. You can tell they don't read comics because at the end of the day, I was like, didn't know that even before Mary Jane was a model. Yes, yeah, she was hot, but she was a, she was just a kid next door. Yeah. And I'm like, if you mess this up, because I'm like, it's a younger Bruce Wayne. This nigga's not going to be played by your fan casting of Army Hammer with his old ass. Like, for real. Yeah, that's funny, because the, the, cause when that rumor came, when the thing came out that Matt Reeves was looking for somebody in their mid-20s, early 30s, it's like, all these castings, you had, um, they had Justin Eccles on the list. I'm like, no, he's almost 40. That's, yeah, Exactly. Matt Reeves knew what he was doing when he cast yeah. who he casted. Army Hammer is, um, I think, late 20s? Mid 30s? I forgot how old. Yeah, no, he's old. And he only had one redeem- redeemable movie. I think it was, um, the spy movie with Henry Cavill. Uh, I know what it is, and it was a pretty damn good movie, but I yeah. forgot the name. But, um,. The rumor is he's supposed to be a Green Lantern, so we'll wait for that, but this Batman movie, I'm actually somewhat excited for it, and somewhat not, because I'm scared. Um, oh. Like, what they're going to cast alongside a major actor. Yeah. Because you know, like, I want other actors to shine, you know, to be, like, lovable. Yeah. And I'm curious what kind of music we're going to get in this. 
I don't want Danny Elfman back. No, you don't. He's gonna make it campy. <laughs> like, I need some shit that's gonna. I need the Arkham, the guy who composed the Arkham soundtrack. Oh my god, yeah, that would be perfect. Especially their theme from Arkham City. Yeah. The fire. That. That's Batman right there. Or like in Mask of the Phantasm, how they, they exactly. remix the freaking no. intro. Like, we just need a dark theme, and that's what it works for. Yeah, like, I want, I want to feel the scenes. You know, like, okay, here's an example of what I mean by this. Alright, look back at Batman Returns. Compare that soundtrack to Batman 89. Batman Returns is the gothic Batman. Yeah. Like, each scene everything like the cat like the, the birth of Catwoman the sadness the anger the dark in that that freaking music that Danny Elfman did for that scene and then Penguin's death felt sad it felt like you could kind of feel bad for him you know? yeah that's what I want in the Batman I want to feel you know I want to feel like I'm in Bruce Wayne's shoes or the villain's shoes or whatever happens yeah. Like like Hans Zimmerman, he did he did good with the Dark Knight trilogy with the music. Yeah. And I want them to continue that because as much as we give the fucking um Batman v Superman like as much as it was shit, the Batman parts when it came to music besides like the warehouse fights was great. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But I just don't want the like I'm over the Batman theme, I don't want it back. Yeah. You know, I want to, I want them to show we moved on from that. I get it, nostalgic feeling, you know, the Batman, but bring in something new that we can make it look, make us feel in the Batman. Cause it's like there's only so much we can take of it. Yeah. But um, shit, I'm okay with the casting. I'm pretty excited to see if they're going to be at Comic-Con to reveal more stuff. Because the script is apparently not done yet. I feel like what we're going to get, we're going to get, at Comic-Con, we're probably only going to get the announcement that is happening. Probably in some castings, maybe. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't mind that. But it's still time. We got until November until they start filming. And I, I don't want yeah. them to, to be honest. I don't want them to show the suit yeah on. don't show the suit I want it to be seen at a trailer now for what kind of suit I wouldn't mind see I wouldn't mind if they brought back like Ben Affleck's the black and gray yeah that kind of fits though they can do like a kind of gray bluish on the cowl and the cape yeah and then like a dark gray Shade on the armor. The yeah. Suit. Because the, the if you look at the Earth one of the Earth one Batman story, kind of had that. He had like this gray, like this like bluish gray kind of dark color on the way, and he had like a little small bat symbol on his chest until he upgraded to like the well-known oval with yellow with the bat symbol, like they did on the um, the, bat, the uh, Burton movies of Batman. Yeah. Um, shit, with my suit, I oh, it's like, I feel like it's too early to have an armor suit. It's yeah, that's like, why I said, like, it's like, too early. they can have, like, a, like, a spandex kind of thing. Yeah, because I'm like, he's too, he's too inexperienced to be like, oh, well, I need armor to protect myself. He needs to get into, like, a couple of, because that's how it happened in the comics. He got injured, he's like, okay, I need to upgrade my suit a bit. Yeah. And that happens with all superheroes at the end of the day, so I'm like, Keep him with the spandex. I do want to see it as more of a black and gray suit. Like, don't copy the stuff from the Nolan movies where he, yeah. has, he has that hockey mask on to visit Jim Gordon. Don't have that. Just... Yeah. yeah. I'm curious, and this is going to sound fucking campy, but they can try to do the white eyes. I feel like it, yeah. it should be an attempt. They could do it. Cause I'm like, if Spider, you can get Spider-Man's eyes with the motion. You can get Batman's eyes. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm getting kind of annoyed that they're doing the whole. Okay, we can see their eyes, and then you start yeah. like questioning how the hell did the cops not scan their eyes? The 
shots and mug shots or whatever. Yeah. But here's the thing, okay. For this story, right, I was reading uh, a book by Marie Lu, which is a young adult book <laughs> of Batman called Batman Nightwalker. It's pretty much Bruce at 18 years old. I don't mind to get some ideas from that when he starts like thinking, okay, I want to be a vigilante. Okay. There's this cool scene in the book where he's on a high-speed pursuit chase yeah. on these criminals, and he gets in a major fucking accident. <laughs> he's visited by Harvey Dent. Like, I don't mind Harvey Dent being on there as a supportive friend. They yeah. should have done that. They messed that up in the Nolan trilogy. Yeah. Because they were childhood best friends. I don't mind if Harvey Dent was on there as a supporting character, and... I forgot what there's a girl that he was friends with that was in the book that he had a crush on her. Yeah. It was a childhood friend of his. It was, her name wasn't Rachel or something else. I forgot that it was that was in the wild. It was Vicky Vale, oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> but they took ideas from that. Like, like I know Matt Reeves reads comics because he says that he loves Batman Year One, the Long Halloween, and some other comics that he read. It's what makes the bar effect. Yeah. I want flashbacks of that, you know, when he's, teen, when he's 18 years old, doing stupid shit, and then he's in his 30s or whatever they're gonna make him, and, you know, see, make, make us see him go through shit. Yeah. Because I'm like, they have so much, pro- they have a huge possibility with this movie, and I'm really excited to see what they're gonna go with it. Yeah. I feel like if they do do the flashback, though, like, like, I don't know who, who can play an 18 year old version of Robert Pattinson. That nigga looks young anyway. Do it himself, you just cut his hair. Clean him up I can good. See that. I made a dealer with uh, Christian Bale and Batman Begins. True. Yeah, like a certain hair, hairstyle to make him look younger. And then they got that de aging technology, which is kind of disturbing, but yeah, that works. Well, it's improved. I mean, if Warner Bros. wants to throw in extra money. I'm sure they will for this. They can do that's Robert Pattinson if they wanted to. Exactly. It's like everything that you, they can do, like they need to really focus on getting this off the ground so they can get one of their off. I want the they fucked up Superman. The major thing though they should do is have a balance of Bruce Wayne and Batman. Don't repeat um, too much Bruce Wayne scenes, too much Batman scenes. Have an equal amount of scenes. Yeah. That's why Michael Keaton didn't have the many scenes as Bruce Wayne in Batman Returns. He wanted more Batman scenes. No, he wanted less Batman scenes. He yeah. more Bruce Wayne scenes. So they do it, if you do it that way, do an equal amount. Because you need to develop the yeah. guy behind the mask. Yeah. And that's what, what they mean? said. That's what they said. They're developing him. Like, yeah. like they're, saying they're, they're saying he's already Batman. Yeah. Maybe. But he's developing more into it. Yeah. A perfect example of this is, and I hate if people are going to get mad because I'm going to keep making moral comparison, do a Spider-Man Homecoming thing. Peter was in there a lot of times, but you saw the suit, you saw him always in the suit when he, when he had to be and you were balanced. You saw him doing skills and stuff that Spider-Man can't do on the outside. He can't, talk, a Spider-Man can't go and talk to his p- parent or talk to Aunt May about something he doesn't know. So Bruce can't go up to like I don't know a reporter and get like as Batman and go up and be like I need information. Yeah. He can probably pay a reporter like yo I need this or he can go and talk to a Wayne Tech employee as Bruce Wayne. Uh, okay. Give them both equal value. That's all I'm asking. All right, so all right, so we discussed this. I think uh, part of the Batman. Oh yeah, go Robin, ahead. Robin. They can bring in Robin. Who is 17 years old or 16? I want them to kind of wait. What do you think? They could throw in mentioning Dick Grayson or having a hard time staying in the home or make run away. I was gonna have it when, like, they do that, cast them young, yeah, do the fl- like, we get the flying Graysons, like, flying Graysons are coming to Gotham. Yeah, and make them, like, at least 10 years old. Not, yeah. Not 15 or 17, because he's supposed to be dropping for five years. But who knows how they're going to do this by year, because, like I said, we don't know too much of when it takes place. How long Bruce was Batman. And I don't know, because we've never seen an accurate Robin on the screen. Yeah. We've never seen an accurate Robin. Like, I understand why, but 
at least throw a name name a name on there because Bruce Wayne is he, if he's in his thirties, then this should be already like their second Robin already. Yeah. If they're gonna go that direction. Yeah, because he took him Robin when he was like 26, 27? Yeah. He was already experienced in being Batman. And then plus in his forties, he was already becoming Nightwing. Yeah. And we don't know what's gonna happen because you know the Nightwing movie is still there, but it's I think shelved for right now because he's the guy is doing other stuff. Yeah. And a lot of DC movies are on shelf right now, so. Yeah, the Batgirl movie is next after the Birds of Prey movie because um, I think they're they filming. Yeah. What sounds of it? They're just editing it because the writer of that movie is writing Batgirl. Wait, the writer of the movie is Batgirl? No, she's writing it. Alright, just make sure I'm not like, wait a minute. No, the thing is, I heard an argument with a friend about the Batgirl situation. It's like, there's there's all these cosplayers and actors who want to be the character, but they're like in their 30s. I'm like, no, it's not going to work that way because they want a young girl, let's say, they can get like 16, between 16 to 21. Yeah. So they can do multiple appearances. If yeah. the bad girl succeeds, and if the actor is likable. Cause I'm like, it wouldn't make sense cause she's, at the end of the day, she annoyed Batman maybe. Cause yeah. it was like a kid doing his job. Yeah. So I'm like, there's no way they're gonna cast someone older cause then what would be the point? Plus she's supposed to be like two to three years older than um, Dick Grayson. And yeah, that eventually leads into their relationship stuff. So it would be yeah. weird for them to catch a thirty year old cosplayer, which I'm not saying cosplayers can't do anything. You guys probably look like the character. They can look like the character, it's just I encountered a few fan film cosplayers and they can't act. It's like okay, this Fox T V in the nineties. So it's like yeah. Do we have like an actual so they don't have a time date, but where would you in your per this is like you were if you were in charge. Where would you set it? Would you set it in the universe ten years before like Shazam and all that? Ten years after? Because I have yeah, an for idea. The, for the Batman? Yeah. I'm thinking like mid nineties. I can see that. Now, the reason why is okay, say we connect the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie with the Batman. Bruce is like looks like he's six, seven years old. You got one more year until parents were killed like they're saying the parents were killed at eight or ten years old so let's make it eight years old it's the 80s he would be what a teenager in the 90s yeah something like that or... he'd be around there he wouldn't be like super, super young Uh, yeah, take place in modern times. So yeah, twenty nineteen. Let's see. Batman's thirty two. That would make it if it was in the seventies, right? Yeah, and then because um, no, Wonder Woman take place in the nineteen eighties sequel. So I mean, she'll be active by some years. Um, Shazam's main villain. How we're able to track time zones is that he got his powers in the night. No, he talked to the wizard in the 1970s. But no heroes were active then. So he could not. So we can't have like Bruce Wayne like exist in the 70s. Alright, so let's see. But Joaquin Phoenix Joker can exist there. Let's see, Joker. And if we're going for a Joker that's 10 years old, like, not. I just read it right now. Yeah. It's set in 1981. The Joker. I can see him, yeah. So, so let's see. If Bruce, let's say, let's make a guess that Bruce is eight years old in the movie. Yeah. He was born in, I guess, early 70s. Yeah. Or late, because it's like he's, um. Seventy-three. Nineteen seventy-three. Was born. How old would he be in the nineties? 
that's true. If he if he was born nineteen seventy three, he'd be in like in his twenties. Sorry, so if they're going from the mid twenties, thing that it could be set in the nineties. Yeah. Okay, let's see. At that, how old would he be in Shazam? In Shazam, we're going twenty nine. He'd be in his thirties to forties. Actually, no, his forties. That'd be perfect. That we can show up and the Batgirl. But Batgirl was Batgirl when she was about maybe thirteen, fourteen years old, or some shit like that. Because there she was because there was a, an episode in Batman M eight series where she was fighting alongside him first before Nick came back to college. Yeah. And the thing is, like, then that would mean that it would match up even if they did go with the bat like they're taking inspiration for cartoon. She was, um, she was Batgirl. She, um, her and Dick Grayson were around the same age. Yeah. Fun fact, she was supposed to be in the Teen Titans team on the cartoon. I didn't know that. Interesting. They didn't want to do it anymore because they said it would conflict with what's going on. Yeah. Because um, they would think that um, Robin wants Batgirl into Starfire, but that was that was a fun fact. One of the per- I don't remember who worked on the cartoon that said it, but he said it on Twitter. But yeah, maybe this movie will be in the '90s with like small, like like how they did it in Batman I mean, seems like with the '90s and the cars were from like the '30s or '40s or something like that. So Batman had advanced yeah. technology. I wouldn't mind yeah. seeing it like that in the 90s with the, the cars they had in the 90s, but with the tech that they had in the um, animated series. Yeah. Just like he's not too super experienced with it. Yeah. But I think we covered this. Yep, we covered most of it. Yeah. Is there anything else on the agenda or no? No, I haven't keep Then I think we're done. Yep. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us for another. Ma- I mean, God damn it, fuck it. Nerd on Beyond podcast. Um, this will probably be up by Tuesday because we recorded this late, and yep. <laughs> I have to edit everything and make sure everything's you know easy peasy lemon squeezy. And uh, yeah, Ren, you got any final thoughts? Um, tell us below what you think of this casting. Who do you want? casting for Riddler, Penguin, Alfred, Catwoman, um, throw in Dick Grayson and Barbara Gordon before Barbara Gordon gets her own solo film. And before we completely end it off, people, some people always ask what the music I use. Go check out the Valhalla OST, but it's spelled with BA-11, I think it is. They make pretty good music. Go check them out. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. As Ren said, comment what you want for castings, which villains you want casted, and all that. Please like this video, it really does help out. Or even dislike, it does the same exact thing. And share the video. Peace out, guys. And yeah, see you guys later.